back to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and this will be a rant of personal feeling. I know all my rants are on personal feeling. This is one of personal irritation, one of personal... I'm a Yankees fan. You want to know how much of a Yankees fan I am? This is how much of a Yankees fan I am. I have two Yankees tattoos. This is Yankee Stadium over a Yankees baseball. I am a diehard, born and raised Yankees fan. I'm 46 years old. When I was born, there were no, I, I live in South Florida. The, My, the Florida Marlins, Miami Marlins did not exist. They didn't exist until I was almost in college. Well, I was a junior in high school, close to college. I cheer for the Marlins as well, but I am a Yankees fan. The Yankees were in Fort Lauderdale for spring training every year as a kid. They were the team that was put on TV down here, channels 7, 29, 39, 33, 6. They were every Tuesday we had Yankees baseball, and my father was a Yankees fan, so that's why. I don't talk about topics that I don't know, which is why you'll never see me speak about golf, auto racing, Surfing, volleyball, badminton, um, name a sport that, I mean, hockey. I, I and We've talked about hockey briefly just in the terms of the playoffs, but you'll never see me really talk much about hockey on here because I don't know the sport well enough to do it. I know that I, I enjoy watching hockey, especially playoff hockey, but I'm not going to sit here and try to do a deep dive on playoff hockey, on hockey, like, it's never going to happen because I just don't know it. I'm from South Florida. We don't ice skate here. <laughs> but we do have the best hockey teams in the world, the, the Panthers and the Lightning. That said, Stephen A. Smith from First Take and ESPN makes a comment about the Yankees. Stephen A. Smith claims to be a Yankees fan, and he might very well be. But he should refrain from ever giving anything specific when it comes to baseball because he has no idea what he's talking about. This is what he said on first take. You got Juan Soto bad enough behind you. You understand what I'm saying? They can't get around you a little bit. So, I mean, they got to pitch to the brother. You understand what I'm saying? Because you got Soto waiting in the wings. So all of those things facilitate Aaron Judge being who he is. I need a moment. I need a moment because when we do this show, when I do my rants, when we, Nick and I do the show, when Nick does his thing, when we all do it as a group, we don't have outside producers or researchers or anything doing the work for us. And that's what happens when you get to that level where you're on ESPN. I don't want to say ESPN, but on his level for which he is on the top. He is up here and everyone else falls down below. He doesn't watch the Yankees. He doesn't watch the Yankees. He may be a Yankees fan. He hasn't watched one game this year. Not one. Or paid attention. If he has watched one, he hasn't paid attention. He said Aaron Judge is having the year he's having. Let me put what he said in context. He said Aaron Judge is having the year he's having because he hits second. And Juan Soto hits behind him. Why does he say this? Because Aaron Judge has been hitting second for the duration of his career until this one. Until this season, Aaron Judge has hit second. This season, Aaron Judge has been hitting third from opening day. Aaron Judge does not hit in front of Juan Soto. He hits behind Juan Soto. I love Juan Soto. 
I love what he has brought to the New York Yankees. He is an incredible baseball player. Aaron Judge is hitting 333, 51 homers, 123 RBI, 467 on base percentage, 156 hits, a what's his slugging? A 731 slugging, a 1.198 OPS. His WAR is 9.8. He leads the league. In damn near every major hitting category, not the American League. He leads Major League Baseball in home runs, RBI, on base percentage, slugging, OPS, war. He's leads the league in walks. Look, Major League Baseball. He is second in Major League Baseball, second in batting average. Despite the fact he still strikes out a lot, although he's dropped it. When he doesn't strike out, Aaron Judge is hitting damn near 500. Think about that. When he does not strike out, it's going to be a hit every other at bat. He is the most petrifying hitter to face in baseball since Barry Bonds. Scary isn't the word. He's being intentionally walked now with nobody on and two out because no one wants to face him. With no, and in that situation, when that happened, the Yankees were down two. And they intentionally walk him with no one on, with nobody on and two out. Worst thing that happens, he hits a solo home run. It's, you're still winning two to one or five, three to one, three to two or whatever. I don't remember what the score was, but there was two, there was nobody out, two, nobody on, two out, and the Yankees were trailing by two, and you intentionally walking. This goes back to when Barry Bonds got intentionally walked with the bases loaded. That's how petrifying he was. Aaron Judge is the most dominating hitter in baseball, and he's not hitting be in front of Juan Soto. He's hitting behind him. He protects Juan Soto. At the same time, what Juan Soto, who I love, is doing for Aaron Judge is that he's a, he's um a table setter. He has been a table setter for Aaron Judge. So Aaron Judge, unlike past seasons, is seemingly coming up to pit with men on base so much more than when he was hitting behind Anthony Volpe last year or Glaber Torres, or DJ LeMayhew, or any one of the many different hitters the Yankees have thrown in as the leadoff hitter because Aaron Boone can never make up his darn mind and is a – I won't even go there with Aaron Boone right now. But the nonstop flip-flopping of lineups, which I've never liked. And even Aaron Judge was hitting leadoff at one point because the Yankees' hitting was so bad in front of him. Leadoff hitters, two-hole hitters need to get on base for the three and the four and the five to drive them in. And in this case, Juan Soto has a 421 on base percentage. He's second in the league. He has a 590 slugging. He has 1.012 OPS. He's got 37 homers. He's hitting 291 right now. He's a little bit of a slump. 95 RBI, 109 walks. The man gets on base. So, Aaron Judge, it's harder to go try to pitch around Judge because if Juan Soto's on base, you, you don't really want to intentionally walk somebody or, or what have you, but it's happened even with him on base. But for Stephen A. Smith to sit here on, on first take on ESPN and Mad Dog, Chris Russo, you disappoint me so much because Chris Russo, man, you walk around like a baseball encyclopedia, a basketball encyclopedia, and you're going to sit here and not know yourself that Aaron Judge hits third and you didn't call that shit out when he said it. I watched the whole segment. He never called it out. He never called it out. So 
Stephen A. Smith just put in the minds of many people who don't know baseball that Aaron Judge hit second and that the reason he's having a great year is because Juan Soto is hitting behind him. That's bullshit. He's having a great year because, because he's having a great year. Juan Soto hitting in front of him has actually helped him, I will say, for sure. Because when you hit with men on base, you have 123 RBI. If you want to look at it right now from a stats perspective, Aaron Judge is so far ahead of everyone else, it's not close. It's not close. Aaron Judge right now is nine homers ahead of Shohei Otani, who has 42. He's first in RBI by 19. He's got 123. Second is Jose Ramirez at 104. Like, this is not a close race. Walks, 110. Second is Soto at 109. Next is Kyle Schwarber at 92. It's like not close again. On base, 467. Second, Juan Soto, 421. Third, Jordan Alvarez, 399. He is massacring the field. If he's not a unanimous MVP this year in the American League over Bobby Witt, something's wrong. Slugging, 731. Second is Otani at 619. That's 120, 112 point difference. OPS, 1.198. Second is Bobby Witt, 1.017. Third is Juan Soto, 1.012. War, 9.8. Second is Bobby Witt, 8.8. I mean, he's third in run scored. Second is, is Soto at 108. First is Bobby Witt at 114. It's, he is sixth in hits. Sixth. This is a power hitter who's sixth in hits, 156, Witt is at 185. Um, and everybody who has more hits, let's give you an example. Aaron Judge has 468 at-bats. Why is that? Because he gets walked so damn much. Jose Altuve has 158 hits on 32 plus 29, 61 more at-bats. Jaron Duran has six more hits on 82 more at-bats. Vlad Guerrero has nine more hits on 12 plus 30, 44 more at bats. Vlad Guerrero hits 322. Uh, Luis Arise has 166, so he has 10 more hits on 32 plus 36, 68 more at bats. And Bobby Witt has. Uh, he has 29 more hits. He's also hitting 346. He leads the league in, in batting average. Aaron Judge is having a monster year. Not a good year. A monster year. This is this is the season that is... And, oh, total bases. Aaron Judge, three, uh, Aaron Judge is at 342. Bobby Woods at 330. This is the season that is in epic levels. It is on that, well, it's the greatest season I've ever seen in my lifetime. My lifetime. I'm 46. A dozen is not part of the steroid era. The greatest season ever is Barry Bonds, 73 homers. End of story. Heck, that might even that might not even be Barry Bonds' best year, if you want to be real. Barry Bonds' best year might be the year after that. And he didn't have, and he didn't have 73 homers because he was being walked so damn much that he didn't have a chance to hit them. Um, Barry Bonds went for 73 in 20 in 2001. He hit, he hit 328, but his best year might have very well been the year the year after when he hit. I mean, I don't even know. Actually, it might have been 2004 when he hit 362 with 45 homers, 101 RBI, but he got walked 232 times. And he had a, an on-base percentage of 609, which is just absolutely ridiculous. A slugging of 812 and an OPS of 1422. He got intentionally walked 120 times. Like that's absolutely ridiculous. That that four-year stretch that Barry Bonds had 
uh, from 01 to 04 was otherworldly. But it's hard to compare because Barry Bonds was the exact same player for most of his career. He just didn't have that power. He was a power hitter, but he didn't have that power. We know why. He was on steroids. I mean, not, I mean, no. He was on stuff. I don't even care on, on, on the real because it saved baseball. That whole thing with McGuire, Sosa, it saved baseball. But this type of garbage from an ESPN upper level guy, he's relying. I know he didn't research it himself because he's not watching them. I know he's not watching them. And he didn't, obviously he didn't research this himself. He had some stupid or he didn't research it at all. He, ba- he went based on past year's knowledge of him hitting second. And he just presumed something. Because I don't think any intern or researcher would have provided him this because there's no way in hell that you could provide this type of information if you actually looked at one box score. Look at yesterday's box score. You sitting here saying that the reason Aaron Judge is doing this this year is because Juan Soto hits behind him? This is why I don't speak on topics that I have no knowledge of. Because it's one thing to be thought of for something to confirm it by your speaking. And right now, Stephen A. Smith looks like a fool. He's getting absolutely skewered on this on social media as he deserves. He should be skewered for this. Because not only that, he also said that Shohei Otani is having a better year than Aaron Judge. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and he and he and he and he said it based on the stolen the fact that oh Otani's gone 40 for 40. 40-40, he has 42 homers and 42 steals. So he's 40-40, he did it really fat. He's going to finish 50-50. You know, he didn't, you know what he ignored? You know what he ignored, Stephen A? Stephen A, this is what you have to remember. And this is why I know that you're not watching baseball. The rules of baseball were literally changed last year specifically to speed the game up. They add a pitch clock. They change the rules on stolen bases. They make the bags bigger. So the first base bag is bigger. The second base bag is bigger. The third base bag is bigger. The only base that's not bigger is home plate. But every other base is bigger. What does that mean? And and, And realistically, it's that much bigger. That much in baseball? Two inches. Oh, that's exactly how much did the did, did baseball make the bases bigger? Oh, okay. All right. No, it's not two inches. It's three inches. The bases were 15 square inches. They are now 18 inches square. That is huge. It's not two. It's three. So what you have is three inches on first base, three inches on second base, Three inches on third base. What does that do? It increases stolen bases. Stolen bases became a lost art in baseball. Long gone are the days of Ricky Henderson and Vince Coleman and Willis McGee and Tim Raines and Harold Reynolds and Lou Brock and all these guys who you walk them, they're on third. They're on third. You have a guy this year, Ellie De La Cruz, with 61 steals. He leads baseball. Otani's got 42. 61 steals for Ricky Henderson, he did in his sleep. Vince Coleman did in his sleep. They might have that at the all-star break. Ricky Henderson had a year where he stole 130 bases. Vince Coleman, 110, 107. I mean, Ricky Henderson on average was still 80, 90 bases a year. Again. The base is three inches bigger on each end. So the distance to the base is six inches less. That is the difference between being thrown out and being safe. To compare this 40-40 to that of Jose Canseco years ago, it's not even remotely close. You can't even compare the two. Now, yeah, you might say Jose Canseco didn't hit 40 home runs then legally because he was on steroids too and he's admitted it. But the stealing base component? You have a six-inch difference. That is that much of a difference. That's You're out or you're safe. That's huge. 
And they limit how many times you can throw to the base for the pitcher. I think it's three times per at bat now. Pitchers will also no longer be allowed to throw to first base or step off the pitcher's mat as many times as they want. Instead, they will be allowed two disengagements per plate appearance. The rules come. It, it's it's a humongous rules change. It's a huge rules change here that happened last year. They're limited in how many times they can throw to first. It says here the distance is reduced per basis by four and a half inches. Okay, so it's not six, four and a half. That's huge still. That's still this much. That's out and safe. Like th these are mat. It could be three inches, but three inches. Go watch a baseball game to see when a catcher throws from home to second or home to third. It's majorly. It's a major difference. I was. I'm pretty sure the picture. I'm pretty sure they're limited to no more than three throwovers to the base, something like that. I believe it's like the three. You, there were days when Ricky Henderson would be at first base when I was a kid, and they would throw over to first base ten times. It would completely, it would, the, it would completely change the at bat because he become the pitcher would become so focused on the guy, the guy on the base that he forgets about the hitter, and then he throws the home and he's throwing balls that are not even close to the strike zone. But these things matter, and if I know that you can't throw over more than a certain amount of times. When you hit that last time, I'm gone. My lead is huge, and I'm running. And that's why that's 40-40 thing, man, it's, it's for the birds, man. It doesn't mean shit. But this is a guy who's sitting here saying that Aaron Judge is hitting second. And the reason he's having such a great year is because Juan Soto hits behind him. Stephen A. Smith, stick to basketball. Stick to basketball. Because if you're going to speak on baseball, have some idea what the hell you're talking about. Because you embarrass yourself and you embarrass and, and you call yourself a Yankees fan. That's what makes it worse. You call yourself a Yankees fan. You call yourself you call yourself a Yankees fan and you live in New York. It's bad enough you don't talk about the Yankees during the season. You don't talk about the season that Aaron Judge is having right now, which is an otherworldly season. But he hits in front of Juan Soto. That's all I got. Like, subscribe, and comment. Ring that bell. Come on now.